Hello viewers, here is a set of VTEC telephones. These are both model 6773. And this set is good and working. This set does not work. The handsets appear to work and the base appears to work, but I don't think they're a matching set. So unfortunately they're rendered unusable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the guts of these handsets and put it into these shells so we can at least get a working set out of this group. These are very heavily worn, quite gross, and the screens don't work at all so we have to fix that back is all beat up. Usually the phones look like this coming out of a business or something. This set and this other set as well were both owned by an elderly couple whose I think it was their son perhaps was selling equipment from their estate and I had bought all the phones and these two were uh, among the sets that were in that lot. Most of the phones in that lot were beat up like these. I've never seen that before. Um, but anyways, so that's what we're going to do. I'm not sure which base to, to use. They're both pretty beat up, but I think this one may clean up a little better. I don't know. Then maybe we'll just swap the whole thing. Maybe that one looks a little bit cleaner. I'll probably clean these shells eventually, just for curiosity purposes um, and then these phones I'm gonna take uh, I gotta check my parts bin and see what I have on hand but if I don't have a speaker on hand for the speaker phone I'm gonna take one of the speakers off of these uh, and use it for that SBC global 900 megahertz phone uh, of oh, this one it's right here for this one because this needs a new speaker so Let's begin here. I didn't notice this before, but one of these clips is the wrong one. This goes to an AT&T phone. I wonder if I happen to have that AT&T phone. Let me check in the box that came from this particular sale and see if I have it. It would appear to be the clip to one of these.
Okay, so these are the boards that we don't have a working base for. I'm going to set these aside for now. We're going to pull some parts off of those potentially. These are the three working boards that I'm going to repair the screens on. And then I'm going to use... what that is. Okay, anyways, we're going to use these these cases because these are in much better condition so I'm gonna go ahead and clean these up now and then while that's drying I will come back and clean the clean the boards and fix the screens I think I have one more clip somewhere I'm gonna take a look around for that I did find some other clips um, I've got these other three here which Actually, they don't need to be cleaned. I'll just put those back in the box. And we'll clean those ones there on the screen now. Now we're going to clean the button boards. This has already been cleaned. We just got to clean this part. I want to do this before I attempt to repair the screen so that I can put different things onto the screen to make sure it's working. I'm going to use 70% uh, isopressyl alcohol.
Okay, that should be good. Now I will connect the battery. And let's see if it's working. Appears to be so. I think those buttons just aren't working because it's searching for the base. Um, I'll plug it in. Confirm that my theory is correct. That's the wrong power adapter. Yep, my theory was correct. It's working now. Okay, good. Actually, I'll just leave that connected because otherwise the battery is going to run down real quick. So now we got to get in here and do the screen. This is a very, very spoiled screen. I think there's only about six or seven pixels working correctly. So typically on these, the failure is within where this ribbon cable meets the board. And so we're going to have to remove the receiver capsule to get to that connection. That will dislodge this whole thing. And then um, this, I believe, just pries out. Probably got a little bit of sticky something or other behind it. And now, this is the part that I really don't like the screen is usually glued in here somehow up here at the top or at the bottom depending on how you look at it and I take a knife and I kind of go through here like this and slowly cut through the adhesive not all the way just the top layer or so and then I try to pry it off very, very gently and slowly. It will come, you just have to be very patient and go slow. And there it goes. After that, you have to slide it through here, like this. Now we have access to this connection right here, which is where the problem is stemming from. This connection right here. And a lot of times if, if you just press on it in certain areas, you can kind of get the screen to work again. You can see it's changing a little bit as we go along there. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some heat along here. Uh, there you can see what's going on now. I'll do that on both sides. didn't really 
do much. Looks like we got a very small portion of the date to work. There's going to be a 17 coming on the screen. So we're probably going to have to do this quite a few times. Sometimes this goes easily, sometimes it doesn't. These phones notoriously fail. This one is extremely failed, so this may take some time. The screens have been repaired, and they're not perfect, but they're upwards of 95 or so percent functional. Looks like there's one, one line of pixels that's still not working right about there, but everything else works. It's certainly readable. You can go through the menu and, and look at all the settings. And so I'm going to leave it here. These have been very finicky with the screens. All three of them were extremely difficult to fix. And they took upwards of like 15 to 20 minutes each. So that's enough of that. This is good enough to use. So now we're going to reassemble. Just noticed I'm out of paper. Only like maybe two feet left on there. That stinks. Okay, I had to get some more paper now. Anyways, um, so for the reassembly, what we have to do is take this piece here and slide this back through and it's going to sit It should sit flush with the buttons here for the dial, uh, with the dial for the volume. So it goes down like that. It's very unnerving to bend the ribbon cable that much, but that's how it goes. And we have to hope that. Oh no, something's not right here. The cable didn't get pulled through enough. to hope that all the work getting the ribbon cable reflowed did not just get undone or does not get undone as we manipulate it here. Okay. That's good. That's exactly how it's supposed to be. Now let's plug in the battery and hope it works. It does still work. I think we may have lost the very left 
road pixels, but yeah, something's not, not quite right about that, but it's going to have to be good enough. The speaker just sits there like that. It doesn't have uh, any screws or anything. This is now ready to go back into the shell.
Alright, everything is reassembled. I have about eight batteries here. Not a single one of them has a full charge to it somehow. So we can't test it yet. We can test the base at least. And I'll plug in the phone line for whatever that's worth. And maybe this particular battery has been giving me a little bit of life. So let's try one of these. Maybe we can get a brief minute or two out of it. Nope. Place and charger. And the screen's not perfect, but it's certainly readable. That battery's not working. Let me try a few other ones here. That's not even booting up at all. Nope. And that's it. I'm out of batteries. Oh, actually, I've got one more here, but I'm fairly certain this one doesn't work. That no, doesn't boot up. Okay, so we'll have to do another video for testing. I'll plug up one of these batteries and I'll charge it up. And I'll do another video of this set. We'll do the final checkout. Where hopefully everything is working. And I'm having so much difficulty with this. Well, whatever, I'll do that later.